Record progress. Hello, welcome to my Web University free educational videos. I'm going to just um, install Python and set up uh, my environment for Python development. And basically um, would be Python 3.10 version as well as um, and uh, Python IDE, which is PyCharm. So in this case, I'm going to and just um, ask you for a favor and to just subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you can get um, the latest and um, uh, every update that I do on the website uh, or in YouTube at mywebuniversity.com as well as on YouTube, my YouTube channel, which is my web uh, university free education videos. You can um, get the latest uh, update that I post. So this one is just a list of all the um, videos that I've already posted. And if I sort it by the latest and newest uh, there, you can see and that um, as of uh, today, I posted uh, this one, the first one. And this one is um, today, Saturday, I posted and the other one I posted it, um, on uh, Friday night. And that one is also uh, chapter four of my uh, Python programming, I mean, uh, direct um, path to Linux, Ubuntu, uh, shell scripting and uh, command line. So please uh, make sure that you subscribe. And uh, I really appreciate uh, your subscription and watching these videos so I can uh, bring the most uh, from uh, the, these courses to you and you will enjoy it and uh, enhance your career. Good luck and best of luck for all of you guys. Uh, so let's just uh, go back to the topic of uh, today, which is I'm going to uh, do a slideshow here and then go to first page of this um, presentation. Basically, we're going to do a set up your Python development environment. And uh, if you do uh, go to the www.python.org website, it will take you to python.org uh, uh, um, website, which is basically giving you everything, whether you want to download the software, Python 3.10.5 or documentation, and then uh, community and all the videos, audios, uh, tutorials, everything. And they also have uh, these snippet of uh, codes that you can practice uh, along with uh, the tutorials. So, uh, and then there's a lot of uh, good stuff on the python.org website. So um, back, coming back to this uh, presentation, if you look at it, there's also documentation for uh, python.org, but that's, I put it as optional uh, because you can get into the Python interpreter inside uh, Python ID and a lot of that, a lot of the functionality and, and um, help uh, that is available online as well as uh, inside the uh, ID idle, uh, as well as integrated development envir environment like PyCharm and, and the Python interpreter. And I'll show you the, how to get those ones. So it's your choice that whether you wanna install um, this uh, Python 3.10.5 uh, documentation locally, so that you don't have to be um, on the internet or you can always access it on the internet, as well as if you want to use it locally, once you install Python 3.10.5, then uh, you have it locally as well. And I'll show you how to uh, reference that one. So at this time, um, I have already uh, downloaded the Python version. So the Python is uh, from the uh, download directory, as you can see, 3.10.5. I have already clicked on this one uh, to save some time and uh, Python have already been uh, downloaded. So let's just go to the command line and uh, just uh, let me just uh, leave this one and open up a new command uh, line as um, uh, I could do it as um, when you type in CMD, you can just select to say, run it as administrator or as uh, just regular user. So I'm going to do it as administrator so I can install Python um, 3.10 for the entire local machine. That way I can access it as any user that I log in as there. In case if I switch user between two of the account that I have, I can 
I still use Python. So currently, if I run Python here, Python 3, it says no such program or has not recognized the command. So similarly, if I do a pep3, it's going to do the same thing because the, on the path also, there's no uh, Python uh, related um, uh, uh, directories that it uh, says that, okay, Python is installed. So let me clear my screen here and start fresh. And then um, at this time, I'm gonna go to uh, the directory where I download it. So I downloaded that the user Swahid and downloads. And then um, user Wahid, not Wahid, downloads. Downloads and then clear the screen. So directory star pi star. You can see that uh, I have already downloaded Python 3.10 AMD 64 bit as well as uh, Python PyCharm community version. And I can also uh, find out that information from uh, the um, Internet Explorer by just going to my directory the same way and go to download directories. And then you can see that uh, PyCharm community as well as uh, Python 3.10 is there. So if I just wanna run it from here, I double click on it. And if I wanna run it from here, I just run this uh, executable file from command line. So it's a, your choice how you want to do it. They started from there. It will do the same thing as, uh, because I installed it uh, from here with this command administrator. Now I have an option of installing the app data Python 3.10. Notice that it gives you a path to the app data local programs Python. So this way, if you just go open up a PowerShell at the current time, when you type in Python 3, there is no nothing on the app data. So it will not recognize it uh, as I'm showing you here on this screen. When you type in Python 3, it's supposed to come up with this screen. And then that screen is basically giving you uh, this option of Git when you do the Python 3. But because it's not installed yet, so I cannot use that one. If I just open up the PowerShell at this time, uh, I cannot do it. So for um, by, uh, Charm, uh, you have to do uh, uh, download it from JetBrains uh, website and it's um, the community version of it because the community version is free. So you go to the JetBrains.com, uh, by Charm downloads and then uh, under the downloads, you will have a professional as well as community. The professional is not free and it is a 30 day uh, trial, but then the Community version is the one that I downloaded and I will install that one. So let's go back to this option. I'm gonna say install now for this one for PyCharm. And then on the previous window that I had open on this directory, you could see that there was nothing with Python. So if I was doing it at that time inside the, um, PowerShell typing in Python 3, it would not recognize that command and like it didn't do it on the command line. But uh, once this one is in the app store, then the um, Python uh, PowerShell also allowed me to just uh, run it from the store and then install it locally and then have it there. And then if it, I have done it through the command line binaries, that will be automatically available on the uh, app store uh, because it's uh, inside that path and the path will be added here. So right now it's uh, saying that uh, documentation is getting installed. I believe I uh, should have clicked on the path to get added. I don't know if I just clicked on it or it's gonna prompt me now, but it is doing the installation already. And maybe it, at the end uh, when it's creating icons and then uh, on the taskbar and then the um, the start menu is going to prompt me to say, do you want to add the Python 3.10.5 uh, path to the path environment variable? And I would say yes. And because you can open any command prompt, any command from outside of that directory, you could just uh, type in um, pep3 or uh, Python3. It will just uh, open up uh, the equivalent binary for it. Um, and if you didn't do the path, you can always go to the control pan panel and just add the path. 
it is not that hard. It's not under the environment variable for a path. You just add that path to it up and extend that, that path. So let's see, this one is uh, right now almost um, there to finish. And then this other window, I don't need it at this time. I'm going to just leave this one. And then the uh, charm community version, I've already downloaded as well. So I'm going to just um, go ahead and uh, do that one. It's right here. And um, while this one is going on, I could just say, okay, right here it says that uh, new to Python. I don't know, I'm not new, but if you're new, you could just go to online tutorials and other stuff if you want to do it. Uh, and then um, just at this time, I'm going to just say close. And then um, let's just see how uh, this path environment is already there. So now I have done it. I can just uh, type in Python 3, and it did not recognize because it, uh, it's not in the path. So uh, somehow um, the path was not added. I can always go under the control panel and just add the path, but I have to find where um, the path is for the installation. So what I'm going to do, I say there of um, there of uh, star uh, Python uh, 3.exec, and then um, just to search for anything with that name, and it's going to find and the location of it if it did is anything with that name, Python 3. Okay, so not under the app data. Let's see if under the local, um, anything with the Python that got installed. So under Microsoft, and then Gonna do with a slash s uh, for subdirectory. It did not uh, find anything there. Let me just see if I could just go ahead and uh, run it again from this version to see. Maybe I just uh, missed the option of adding it to the path. And if it doesn't, I'll just add it uh, manually on the control panel. That's not a problem, but I have to install on this um, binary. Make sure that uh, you can see run as administrator. I'm going to have that option here as well. And I'm going to just run it as administrator and I install it. So uh, this time it says modify or remove the individual features and install this. So if you just uh, run it again, the second time it says it's already installed. Do you want to modify it? Yeah, I say yes. Uh, and then Py launcher. And then um, let's see the option that is there or not. And you can see that PEP is also there for the option and the uh, TCL, uh, TK, IDLE, and PyLauncher, and Python test suite. Um, so let's see next. And here it says associate files with Python requires that Py extension, add Python to the environment variable. That's the part that could have added to the Python uh, previously. So this is the customized install location under the users Wahid app data local programs. After local, it was programmed. So uh, that's why it did not uh, find it here. Under um, this, we go programs. And then um, now Python is there. And then uh, Python 3, uh, Python 3.10. If we just go add it manually, then we need to get this Python 3.10, wherever is the executable files like um, um, this uh, directory of python.exec, that file is there. So py python.exec dash, uh, dash version, that tells you that it is already installed. And so we're just adding that this time the path and that would just, um, we don't have to go to this directory structure because we're adding it. And download debugging symbols, um, download debugging binaries. So. If I want to just uh, do additional things, I can do that one for debugging. And I'm going to do that one because I'm going to teach you everything. So I want to make sure that we have every features that I can uh, talk about it uh, and uh, show you stuff there. 
So at, at this time, Python is uh, getting installed in addition to some of the standard libraries are getting it and then the debugging tools, uh, everything. Uh, and then also the path is getting added. So if I just say path here, now uh, the Python um, path may just already be uh, getting added. Windows app. So in order for me to know exactly there, I can do a find a slash I and then say Python. If that word is matched, and then it will have an entry, but it is still doing the installation. So we just have to be patient here. And then um, if I just open a PowerShell, And then this time I say Python 3 as um, binary, it's, it's not recognizing it. So that's fine that it's not recognizing it, but this is has to be compiled and it's uh, done and with the path, everything. And then uh, once the path is added, it will be recognized here. So let's see if at this time, while this one is doing it, I clear my screen and I say Python, Python 3 dash dash version. It is still not recognized, but here, if I just say Python uh, 3, so uh, dot slash Python 3 dot exact dash dash version, it will just uh, Python 3 dot exact dash dash version. Uh, let's see why it's um, Python. There's a, oh, Python 3 is not there, but Python is there. So this one should have um, worked. Yeah. And then if I just do uppercase dash V, it will also do that one. And if I just say type Python, it will just uh, bring up the Python 3.10. Eventually, we'll just uh, do the Python uh, uh, 3 as well. Uh, it will just finish it and uh, it will have that file as well. But um, the, uh, exit out of this one and do a store a pep. So let's see, the pep is not there yet, 3.10. And we can install that one also uh, using Python command, the pep modules. Okay, updating it, pre-compiling the standard library. This information is taking a little bit longer than a normal because I choose the debugging option and pre-compile the standard libraries and some of the standard libraries um, that are essential, uh, we just want to have them. Uh, and then uh, for NumPy and requests and other that are not part of the standards, um, we just have to download them using pep, pep space install and then NumPy. Pep space install regular expression. Regular expression comes in actually, uh, is part of this uh, standard C uh, uh, module that is um, supported under Python. And then um, what I was talking about was request. Thank you for updating Python 3.10. So it says yes, it's done. Now let's see if um, uh, say that um, um, I need to just uh, type in path and then find slash i and then see if Python is in the path. It is still not in the path. And then and that's because I opened this environment, uh, I mean, shell uh, earlier. Now I am opening another shell and then I type in path and then do find slash i and then Python. And this time it is there. And um, uh, you can see that the Python 3.10 is there. So now if I say the Python uh, uh, itself, it will take me there. And then if I just receive uh, Python 3 might also take me there now. So Python 3 is not uh, going to do it, but maybe Python 3.10 is there. So uh, let's see if I go to this directory, see colon user uh, local 3.10, and then uh, look at that pi start of exact, there's, um, Python and W and then Python. The Python W is for the Windows uh, version of the same thing. So it's a little bit uh, kind of like open in a Windows environment uh, session. But um, Python itself is uh, there. And then, um, 
So the version um, that we are using here, if you want, we can just um, copy Python uh, as a Python three and that doesn't matter. And that is uh, there or in the Unix environment, we create aliases to point to the same one uh, there. Uh, and then since I'm a local account, I could just see if I could uh, do something like this. Copy Python dot exec as Python t dot exec. And now uh, I could type in um, Python 3 dash dash version is the same as a Python dot exec. So whether you type in Python dash dash version or Python the three now you will get into the prompt here. And if I quit, uh, it is quitting there. But let's do this. Um, so we uh, did install Python. Let's do install the PyCharm now, the ID. And then um, while the ID is getting installed, I'll do some demo inside the Python. And then uh, now um, what, what I'm doing here is clicking on PyCharm to install the integrated development environment of uh, on PyCharm, which is from jetbrains.website. And as you can see here on the main page, um, actually, I'm not uh, showing that one to just go to the JetBrains. And then, um, but you can go to JetBrains and download. Yeah, yeah, I'm showing this one actually on this page. So if I go from this beginning and there, and then on this page, Right here, I'm showing that you can go to jetbrains.com uh, slash PyCharm download and download the community version of it. And then after that, uh, you are having and, uh, uh, a binary available in the downloads directory, which is this one. And you double click on it, then you just agree on the uh, part that it says, okay, this uh, verify publisher is yes. And then it will go through the installation and we'll install PyCharm uh, for you. So at this time, let's just um, go to the default setting. It says, welcome to PyCharm community edition. Yes, I wanna do the community edition, which is free. And then it says that it's gonna install in the 64-bit program files. And it, it requires, the space requires 1.4. So 1.4 uh, space required. And then uh, this is for um, the PyCharm uh, community version, as you can see on the top here. So, and then I say next. Um, and then I want to just uh, um, create a desktop shortcut, add uh, a folder to the projects. Yeah, put the extension of the files with .py, and add then uh, to the uh, path. So that way, um, I can have the Python interpreter, and um, the uh, choose the start menu folder and the start menu is under the JIT bra uh, brains. That is good. And it is doing the installation. Now you see this icon that just showed up on my desktop. This is gonna take a little bit, maybe uh, five minutes, maybe one minute, depending on your uh, speed of your system. So I'm going to just uh, let this one run. And then I'm going to go to PowerShell, um, PowerShell and then just, uh, do a power, power shell because we added the uh, environment variable in the path. It should say the same thing on the path here. Um, so um, the path actually is not there, echo percentage path percentage. And that variable is not showing in the shell here. So let me see clear screen would work. Um, Yes, and then I'm gonna say Python, let's say Python, sorry. Somehow the keyboard is uh, a little bit uh, sticky. Py, um, Python, so Python that exact, it should run the Python uh, here. And now I'm inside the Python um, um, interpreter. So at this time, if I do a dir of this, you can see all the information that is available for me on the Python uh, there. So let me just um, make this window a little bit here. And then at this time, if I just um, run some of the commands like help on the bell, uh, double underscore 
double underscore. These are magic method or double underscore and dunder method, uh, belt, belt, ends, double underscore. So if I get to just see all the built ends, whether it's modules, functions, and exception, all the classes and all objects, all, all exceptions you will see uh, under the double underscore built ends. You are uh, able to uh, read about them and just go through them and just uh, even F a statement, for a statement, all these keywords and functions and everything, and net and reduce and other ones. Dictionary, list, uh, tuples, uh, everything. Um, so it is uh, available here. You can go through the list. I'm going to queue on out of it. And then, as you can see, I got that information from their command. So at this time, if I just want to say, let me get into the um, uh, interpreter help uh, command. And this one, if I just look for the list of topics that I can learn, Look at how many topics are there that you can just look. If you want to just learn binaries or you want to uh, learn the data types, float, integer, string, um, the data structure like list, uh, two tuples, and data dictionaries, all of them are there. Let's say you're interested on list, and then you just type in an uppercase a list, and then all, all it does. So it's case sensitive inside there. And it tells you that how you define less and everything. And then if you are just saying that, yeah, I read enough, let me just see what other things are there. Under the modules, you will get the list of all the modules that are uh, by default uh, comes with this Python installation. You can see that the rest of the Python is all of them are very important uh, packages that you can do XML, you can do PTY and DBM and then CSV everything. So in case if you're interested, say a regular expression for a Python, let's say you could just type in RA. And then let's say NumPy, if a NumPy is not installed, then that means you have to install that package. And if you type in math for the math modules, because it's part of the standard that is there. So uh, we just talk about a, a package like NumPy, how about request? request is not uh, there either. So as a, a pep install, I will just demonstration how to do that one. Like if you do help of math function, you could get all the math function here. And then if you just say, okay, yeah, I um, did the math and then I say import math as M. Now I um, did that uh, math library, dir of math is the same, uh, I'm sorry, dir of math, Math, actually, I have to say import math, and then and now say dir of math is uh, the same as dir of m, because I said import math as m. And so and now if I say math dot uh, pow dot pow of uh, two to the power of 10, it's gonna give me um, two to the power of uh, 10 is 1024 and then two to the power of well, uh, 11 is going to be 2048. So now if I say m dot pow, would we'll return the same thing, 2 dot 11 or 10, it doesn't matter what number you choose. Or m dot square root of um, 100, uh, you could just get uh, 10. And then similarly, m dot pi value, you could uh, get that one. So dir of m, uh, you see all the uh, functions that are there, sine, cosine, square root, truncate and then radians and prod and pow, pi, everything is available. And floating point, absolute value and expression and so on. So uh, for the numpy, if I say import numpy as np, it just says numpy modules not there. If I say import uh, request, it's gonna say um, uh, it's not there. So what do I do on that case? And I'm going to just exit out of here, I'm going to say, um, let's see if uh, PEP3 uh, is installed. So if uh, PEP is installed, as you could say PEP list, when you install uh, Python, PEP also gets installed with it. So you don't need to just um, look for uh, additional uh, installation. But PEP3 might not be there because uh, remember I created the uh, 
equivalent version for that one. Yeah, it is there. So that's good. And so uh, they're uh, both the same thing. So pep dash dash version and pep uh, three dash dash version will, uh, um, sorry, pep um, dash version. Version, I, I wrote it wrong. So pep dash dash version would tell you or pep uh, three dash dash version would uh, return you the same value of 22.04. And if it is a, a newer version, you can always upgrade it to the latest one, but that is a latest version. That's why it did not prompt us. Otherwise it would have done. And then I would type in um, Python uh, three uh, minus M pep and then uh, uh, upgrade dash dash actually dash dash upgrade and then uh, pep. And that one, and then uh, pep, and then and there's a after the pep, there's a uh, option of install, and then dash dash upgrade. So and this option and dash dash upgrade is um, not there. So install, and then I think instead of upgrade, you just do update, update um, to see make sure that it's getting the latest update for pep. So. Um, Again, let's just see if it's upgrade. Maybe I was right in the first place. Yeah, it was um, dash dash upgrade to upgrade it to the next level. But because uh, PEP uh, 22.04 is already there, it is uh, just uh, going to check uh, to see. Pep to, yeah, 22.1.2 is the new one. So we're getting uh, the latest one, which is um, PEP 22.1.2. Every time you run, if there's another version, it should tell you and you can just upgrade it to the latest uh, version. So now this one is done. And then I say um, pep um, dash dash version, you will see that it's 22.1.2. As you can see here, 22.1.2. We just um, did this command dash dash upgrade uh, to upgrade it. So now let's just do another command here. And uh, we just going to say pep um, install, and then we're gonna say numpy. So numpy will be installed, and then uh, we could just uh, use numpy as well. And then similarly, we could do uh, pep uh, install for um, for um, request. So here, this one it says. Um, do you want to reboot it, uh, your system? No, I don't want to reboot it because I'm recording it. So uh, after this one, when I'm done with this pep stuff, I will just stop it and uh, start saving the uh, record. Otherwise, uh, if my system uh, says I want to uh, manually reboot later, if I get that one, I will reboot uh, now. And last time uh, in the middle, it killed the session. So I don't want to do that one. And I just make sure that I uh, save my Zoom records and then that way it is done. So now I did that one. Let's just also install uh, pep request, request, and then uh, get those two packages installed, NumPy and request. And as you can see, it is uh, done. And in addition, it, uh, pep is very smart. It's going to just look for the dependencies. And if there is any dependencies, it will just uh, meet on those dependencies and add additional um, modules. Like URL lab three was uh, installed as a result of installing uh, request. So NumPy is there. Now if I just go here and so I say Python and then say um, um, import, import uh, NumPy as NP and then do a dir of NP, Notice all the functions that are available, all the modules and all the exception and uh, double underscore methods, anything that is with NumPy, it's really huge. And then you can just uh, get a big list. I'll do a separate video on these uh, ones, whether it's NumPy or other modules like math or sys or ops, uh, OS or something. And so let's do another one, say help and NumPy. So now notice that when you go to, um, so, sorry, help 
uh, um, uh, NP because I said uh, imported as uh, NP. Uh, I didn't say import NumPy. If you say import NumPy, then you can do help on NumPy and you can read the uh, uh, documentation here. So you can even uh, try some of the examples if you want to just create an array or something. Um, you can do that one and you can see that some of the examples are very intuitive. They give you uh, for uh, scalability vectors and all the other array structures. You have those and dimension and so on. But uh, let's just uh, get out of this one and then now import the request. Request and there of request, not this request is also uh, these uh, modules that are there and there. So help on the request, you can see that it is uh, just uh, getting uh, a request modules. So for example, and then the examples that are showing here, you can not even uh, get into a module and then say uh, import request, which we did in request.get and put the website.python.org and get the status of it. And then um, we, get, we get a lot of methods that are available. Let's just for this uh, sake, we just, um, instead of python.org, uh, use mywebuniversity.com, something like that. So I'm going to say, we already did r is equal response is equal request and dot and get. And then the URL is um, http uh, colon dot, 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 dot mywebuniversity.com. And then you put it in single code or in double code, uh, it is the same. So now R is there, R dot status code will give me 200 because that URL is valid. If I just type in that uh, R to HTTPS, because it's not uh, on that one, you can see that uh, fails. But if I change that one to HTTPS and uh, google.com, because Google is there, then the R is um, successful. R dot status code is also successful 200. And there of R, you can see that all the options that are there. Um, R.URL basically tells you that is if you're using the um, um, URL of um, Google. R.text, um, for example, that you can just get the uh, uh, actual text. R.byte, and then, uh, sorry, R.json maybe. R.json. Uh, and then the JSON, let's say door of R again, here, you, whatever is uh, available for you can do it. Uh, text was there, R.OK is also gonna give you say through it's there. And the one, the case of um, this other one, um, when I did uh, uh, HTTPS with uh, W, R.OK is not uh, okay. It will say false. Actually, this uh, say okay. So let me just uh, take this one out. And then um, for the HTTPS, I'm gonna go to uh, HTTP and then I say R dot um, status and code, it's gonna say 200 R dot text. It's gonna just give me the actual text the information of it. R dot content will give me invites uh, all the pages. So there's a lot of uh, information here that you can parse and then um, and, and get it down there. R dot headers, for example, headers uh, is going to just give you uh, key pair values of um, those information uh, related to uh, some of the content type and uh, content length and uh, keep alive on that, uh, keep alive the content type. So for example, content type is text slash HTML value. And uh, there's more, so um, we're not gonna go through uh, the whole modules at this time because uh, we're going to cover more. And um, we did uh, some of the stuff. So if I wanna clear my screen here, I'm gonna say import OS and then say os.system. And then I'm going to do the clear screen on Windows uh, directory here. I could do that. And then uh, os.system also, if I wanna say, uh, get the system information and that uh, pipe more, because this one is basically from uh, Windows is coming. 
and I want to just know that it's um, running uh, Windows 10, you can see that um, that information is going to come for it down there. And um, the whole details are there. And if you are interested, like the model of uh, things, you could say find slash and then um, find actually is um, OS uh, command uh, rather than uh, um, PowerShell command. Uh, on the PowerShell, you do a where object, but this system info is a Windows command. So um, you can also uh, get uh, like AMD, for example, and then uh, skip the AMD and you will get the information saying that, okay, the processors advanced micro device 64 bit family. Uh, and that's 3.1 gigahertz. And if I'm interested on in the memory size uh, for memory, I can get all that total memory, available memory, all of that by just uh, getting that information. It's really nice within that things. And if you just say OS uh, dot get, um, um, get a current working directory, for example, it will just tell me that it's there. OS dot um, get login. And then uh, the login name. Uh, there's a lot of number of OS functions that you can do uh, there. Um, so we will we will check uh, some of them um, at a, another session. But I'm just going to uh, jump back out of this one, exit out, and uh, we uh, already uh, saw that pep list that we just did. Uh, NumPy and other ones were also available for us and uh, we uh, get everything there. So with that, I'm going to end this um, uh, session because we installed Python 3 and we also um, installed um, PyCharm. On the next session, I'll open PyCharm after rebooting the machine and then um, just bring it up uh, in um, PyCharm and we can just do some demos of the PyCharm. As a matter of fact, if you are doing anything like a Python program to just say hello and dot py, you can just even uh, go here programs and then uh, let's say cd to um, programs. I don't have that directory. So let me just exit out of this and um, I'm going to go to the command prompt and, and go to users uh, and then let's see under what I have uh, there. Uh, do I have a programs directory? No, yeah, no, I don't have it. So I'm going to just make a directory called programs and uh, go to programs. And at this time, I'm just going to uh, use a notepad. It doesn't matter what I use. I don't notepad. I could uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, Py ID. You can uh, VI, VEM, Emacs, any uh, tools that you're using that's available on your hand, uh, whether it's at the operating system level or some sort of uh, IDE or something kind of um, nicer tools to do the edit, you can use that one. So let's just use the notepad and just, and here I'm going to just make a directory called Python, Py, Python, and then CD to Python, uh, CD to Python. And we just write one simple uh, program called uh, Prog1. So say notepad prog, prog one dot pi, or uh, we could call it hello, or we could call it program one, or whatever we call it, doesn't matter. Uh, and then now we say yes. Um, do you want to create a new file? Yes. And then here we are going to say uh, that um, uh, option. We can just tell it uh, the interpreter that we are using Python three as uh, our interpreter. And we could just do this one by shebang, shebang, and then say Python 3, uh, like that, Python 3.exec or something. And then um, on the uh, wind of those, you can do that one, or um, you can put the full path, or you can just say user ben env Python uh, 3 if you're just on a Linux environment. And if you just don't put anything on Windows, as long as the extension is there, the code says something useful, like let's say just a simple print statement. I'm gonna just say, uh, welcome to my web university. Uh, three, 
educational units. So this is just a, a one um, parenthesis statement, nothing else. And then we just save this one, save. And then now we are going to just um, uh, go here and say uh, Python, because we um, did not give the uh, shebang Python there. We're just um, using Python to read that code and say, welcome to my web university for education views. That's as simple as that one. But uh, later on, we will do additional software and everything. And uh, just to give you a, a taste of it, uh, you can just put any syntax of Python that you did in the interactive uh, inside this uh, script and do it. For example, you could say for um, item in a, a range of uh, 10, let's say um, just print out those 10 items. You could say print item. And then, um, or you could just say uh, x is equal um, x for uh, x and range of um, 10 and then uh, let's say 20 and then uh, we say for range of uh, 20 f um, x is um, x mod um, uh, x um, x mod um, X, um, um, let's see if X is equal, um, X mod, uh, I think mod is uh, like this symbol, and then mod uh, two is equal, uh, is equal uh, zero. This one is the mod symbol right here, X mod two is equal uh, zero, and then uh, just, um, so we get only the odd numbers here. And then um, we say this and then say print x. So now let's just um, run these two items uh, quickly and save it, save. And then we just run the same Python program. Notice that this one is printing zero through nine because the first one was printing the for, uh, for statement. And the next one is a, uh, less comprehension, X is now uh, printing uh, the range of uh, zero through uh, 18, which is all um, even numbers. So you can also do this one as a um, list of odd numbers. So let's say uh, for uh, X, you can use X again. All you need to do is just this one not equal to zero. If it is not equal to zero, then uh, it will be odd numbers. So let's see if um, this one, we run it. And yeah, it will give you the odd numbers on the next one. I think this is uh, just like a little bit uh, of um, uh, simple programs that we just did, but um, on a, another session, we will actually open the IDE and then do it everything. So this is good enough. And then you can also type uh, prog1, prog1.py so you can see the actual code here. And that and this code is printing that. And then um, when you run it uh, like uh, this, it will just uh, give you the output there. So in order to see the whole thing in one screen, uh, basically um, it is that. And um, right there. So this is a type program, uh, program one. It says, welcome to um, my web university free education videos. It uses a for, for statement with a function range of 10 uh, numbers. And then uh, zero through nine is going to be printed here. The next one is a list comprehension that is uh, just basically uh, going through odd and uh, even numbers between uh, zero to 20. So it prints out zero to 18. And the next one is uh, odd numbers. And um, because um, X module two is not equal to zero. And this is the module symbol. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I um, will make another video sometime when I'm off again and for uh, just teaching you PyCharm, inside PyCharm, as well as other additional videos there. 
So uh, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and uh, like it. Uh, and then also make some comments if you uh, need something to see bigger screen or something that is uh, needed, let me know so I can adjust accordingly. If you uh, like the background, make a comment saying that keep this background or make a little bit slight background because a little bit um, kind of needed improvement. So let me know. Have a nice one. Take care, love and peace for all.